Hold on. Yeah, we got you doing a little bit of dancing there. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, I was jamming out. <laughs> oh, the old live stream. It'd be a shame if nobody shows up. <laughs> now nah, we got a few on here. We got a few. Yeah, I'm having some weird audio uh, issues too. I don't know. Is it real slow for you too, Chris? What's going on, everybody? No, you're fine. You're good. All right. Yeah, I'm getting it like really, really, really latent from you on your end for some reason once we went live. But all right, so we got Blaze Moran, Jimmy Graham, Big Country, Redneck Brimfire, Tree Feller, Jay George, uh, Tree Feller, I think I already said, Numa Robertson, Bill Bennett, Blaze Moran. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it, guys. Yeah, I'm hearing it fine, but it's like re it's coming back to me like 30 seconds later, which is really weird. Not sure what's going on with that. Does it sound weird to anybody that's watching? Because I, I hear you fine. I yeah, and I hear you. You sound thing. It's just playing back my own audio for whatever reason. Well, what's on the docket for this evening? Well, I guess uh, open with some questions. If you guys got questions, let me know what y'all have. Uh, and then I've got some little toys here. Some ammunitions to talk about. <laughs> I got these. Do these count? <laughs> yeah, those do count. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. What do you do Somebody today? That, you looking, Chris, looking like you've been working out a little. <laughs> <laughs> working out at doing nothing. Right. I go to work, I come home, I go back to work, come back home. I'm just naturally big. Hold on, Chris. I'm gonna... he's, he's used to seeing I'm you. Now, you know. I'm naturally big. What'd you do? I had to unplug you my headset for a second. I'm trying to get rid of this reverb. Hopefully it's not going to be an ongoing thing. I wonder if it's something to do with my mic placement. Is that better? I'm still hearing it like super duper late. Nah, I, mean, I don't know if you have a speaker on. Maybe that's where I'm hearing. I'm hearing like a reverb. How about that? Is that better? Or you're hearing yourself, right? Yeah, I'm hearing me and I'm hearing you like two or three times, which is weird. Hmm. Sorry, folks. Hold on we're one sec. No, you're good. Hold on. Let me see if this works. Let me try to see if it's on Chris's end or my end. <laughs> nope, it's definitely my end. All right, we're adding Chris back. It's like I'm just the odd guy out here. Just... <laughs> yep, this is going to be weird. It's playing back the audio like three times. Every time I say something, every time you say something, it comes back like over and over and over again. He brought the shaft. What is the shaft? Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a DST precision the shaft. 
The shaft. The shaft. Yeah, I've got my mic set to just the camera mic, which may be what's uh, hurting me. Well, yeah, maybe that'll work. We'll see. Yeah. Let's get this show on the road, homie. How much difference in accuracy is there? Standard CZ 457 varmint barrel, the MTR version, and a Lilja barrel. So the standard 457 is just a men style chamber, and they can shoot really well. And then the MTR is just going to come with like a match chamber. So it's still a factory barrel, but it's a match chamber. And then the Lilja obviously is kind of a custom semi-custom barrel so it's going to be finished out a little nicer than the mtr I, i've had pretty good luck out of the lilja myself the but i mean i've got a i've got that oh we on the channel i call it the diy cz the one in the pro varmint stock and it's got that 20 and a half inch standard varmint barrel no match chamber and it uh Man, it holds its own. It it really does. It's hard to beat it. Oh, gonna run a new ACC chassis. Where at in Tennessee is he shooting? I wonder if that's that uh, um, Nightmare Before I think Christmas or something. Nightmare Before Christmas. I think him and Langley are going. Um, Grant's out by us. Yeah, I think. Oh, uh, I, I talked to Tom Wyman uh, yesterday, maybe. I think he said he was going yesterday or the day before. I can't remember what day I talked to him. Ever modified or trying to modify the MDT LSS Gen 2 for PRS? I know the four and is short on it. The reason I asked is they only offered that one and the orders for the particular rifle I want to put it on. Hmm. Not me. Maybe Chris. Well, I... I have never owned one, but a guy I shoot with, he has the LSS Gen 2. Uh, but I, I can't remember. I don't know if he ever shot really any PRS with it. I've seen a few around, but everybody that I've seen using it usually put some kind of big old long Area 419 rail on it to try to compensate for it. Just because, like you said, that forend so short compared, you know, to the some of the stuff we're running. But even with, you know, well, wherever it is, that PRS-1 right there behind me, uh, you know, I mean, my Arca rail hangs off, what, an inch and a half, two inches off the front of it. And you see them extended way past. So maybe that, uh, I, Josh, I don't know if you've showed that that great big old Arca rail thing you've been messing with. but Yeah, I went probably today. Help it. Yeah, carry oh, this comment for a second, Chris, and talk about that. I'm going to figure out this audio. It's still reverbing for me pretty bad. I'm going to figure it out real quick. Okay. Have you, I'm going to lean around here and look around stuff. Have you tried an IBI barrel versus the Lynx and the CZ? And is your 17, how's your 17 HMR going? Well, the only IBI, well, actually, we have tried some IBI barrels on my channel in the past, uh, some 12 twist CZ stuff. Um, the only, I think the barrels shot okay, but some of the issues that, that we saw really came into how lot dependent the fast twist stuff was. Being that 12 twist, um, you really had to make sure that you had the lot that that barrel liked. Uh, so I'm not going to pick on IBI too much in that sense with the CZ. We tried it again with the Begara. Josh tried a barrel. Uh, he didn't have much luck with it. Uh, I think there was an issue or something. Sent it back. IBI sent another one. I, I can't remember how it all went. But uh, we ended up shooting a second Begara pre-fit. Uh, Josh didn't have any luck with it. I struggled with it a little bit, but you know, when, when you're doing, when you're in this game, right, 
you're trying to, a lot of us spend a lot of money on a certain kind of ammo. And if you're not in a situation to go test everything, you're not going to find what it really shoots. Right. So I struggled with it. I ended up having, uh, I think my, that bagara has got a uh, Krieger on it now. And uh, another gentleman's got that IBI. He wanted to run it, give it a shot. He sent me some group pictures the other day. It looks like he found some SK rifle match and it, it looked like it was shooting pretty good. So I was excited to see that and uh, I need to get back with him. But uh, I don't know how Josh's 17 HMR is going. Uh, I've got a CZ 457 chambered in a 17 HMR. And you just wouldn't believe, like we, when I first got it, really struggled with some of the typical ammos, right? Like the CCI TNT, uh, the Hornady. Um, and we got to shooting around and I, I was really like, kind of bummed because my my cz wasn't shooting that good my 17 hmr and uh ended up trying some remington uh premier magnum i think is what it's called um i shoot i think there's some sitting here actually yeah premier magnum rimfire that stuff right there so, um, tried that and the gun just come to life. Uh, and I, I, I don't like, I'd have never guessed to try Remington rimfire ammo like ever, but man, for whatever reason, I, I've got, a, I got a couple bricks of that stuff and it hammers. So, uh, out of, you know, my CZ is going great. Oh, thank you, Josh. He's keying me up some more comments here. I can't see the comments, guys, so I apologize. Uh, have you ever known a barrel or tight headspace to produce hot rounds? I was getting, what does that say? I was getting the odd 1165-68 slash velocity on, er, on early match versus the normal 1098. Huh. You know, um, hmm. I'd kind of rebuttal that question with a, I mean, is it, are we talking, is this a custom barrel? Is this, you know, there, there's some stuff I'd want to know there. Uh, what chamber is it? What twist rate you got? All that kind of good stuff. I've seen what you're saying there in factory guns before. Um, matter of fact, uh, like my Ruger RPR that we mess with here on the channel quite a bit. Um, it'll do that real bad. Um, and I don't, I honestly don't know if that's a headspace thing or if it's an, like, I don't know where, you know, you'd be shooting like a five shot group and one of them's just going to go nuts. Uh, and I don't know if that's a combination of, of messed up headspace and a combined with, you know, just a, a flyer around anyway. Um, but as far as like a custom barrel with a tighter headspace chamber, I have not seen this. That's not something I've run across in the past. The that's the whoop, whoop, wrong hand. That's the voodoo, the one in the white one, right there. By the way, that's the new stock that it's going to be riding in. In case anybody's wondered, but uh, the voodoo, yeah, I've never seen that out of it. Uh, and then the new Curtis. I haven't seen it, any issues like that out of that one or uh, looking in the gun case beside the gun cabinet over here. Uh, the Krieger barrel that's on the other Bagara. I haven't seen, no, no, I, I, you got me on that one, tree feller. I don't know. I, it'd be interesting to know if that's a custom chamber or, or what you're shooting there. I don't, maybe Josh can key me up a another comment here i'm running dry buddy <laughs> but uh i don't so i don't know how many people's on on here and who, who's all listening but if any of y'all are in the central u.s area like obviously you know i'm over here in missouri we shoot a lot of the uh most series missouri steel tactical but 
one of my favorite ranges, I even I go so far as call it my home range. I remember there is Gadsden Shooting Center in Iberia, Missouri. And uh, it, uh, uh oh, what's he doing? Josh calling me. Hang on, guys. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. But uh, anyway, so over at Gat, hey, there's Josh. But uh, like I say, over at Gadsden Shooting Center, there's uh, oh, uh, there Doug Bose. I think he's been on my my channel before with the uh, BS at the bench that he did with Josh and I. He's hosting a rimfire. In our like a NRL hunter style match, team match, January the thirteenth. I'm gonna be up there for that, uh, shooting with a buddy. Um, so I'm this coming shooting season. I'm gonna be looking for getting into NRL hunter, and then moving into some of that. So, hey, we got some comments. We got Josh. What do you got? Right. Yeah. So sorry about that, everybody. For some reason, on this browser, when I was connected to the computer. I just like no matter what I did, it would reverb it like five times, and it was impossible to talk through that. But yeah, it looks like uh, I think what is that? Uh, Facebook, the Rimfire Exchange is probably a good place for that. Um, you could try and set one up, um, ideally. But the Rimfire Exchange is probably a good uh, group on Facebook to do that if you're just trying to swap around ammo. But not a bad idea. Uh, you know, a lot of times that just kind of get a different lot. Somebody else is looking for one. Yeah. Pretty dang well. Oh, boy. So, yeah, I heard uh, Chris talking about the, sh the NRL Hunter. We're also doing um, – oh, he hung up on me. <laughs> We're also yeah, man, doing the Rimfire two-gun match. Um, those are going to be hopefully more popular or something. We're going to host here. You know, we're going to get those going. So those should be a lot of fun. That's kind of what I'm gearing up for. I'm going the wrong way. Uh, uh, where is it? That guy there. So that guy there, like an AR-22 setup I'm playing with. But it should be a whole lot of fun. Let's see. Let me scroll through these comments to make sure we didn't miss anything really important. Sorry if I missed Are you getting any feedback? No. It, like my phone's not causing an echo. No, that's good. Okay, cool. We didn't miss anything uh, real good. Let's see. There's one. Where's MWLR based out of? <laughs> I am based out of central to say southern missouri <laughs> without getting too specific missouri yeah oh yeah i know tree feller i'm so jealous of those guys right now because they're in australia in summertime over there well, i want to know what the what is that i'm gonna have to break out google or something to tell me what 32 degrees celsius is we live in the united states we use the king system buddy <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it means better than here. <laughs> hey, guys, like and fine. Let's get in the show. Yeah, let's see, brother. Sorry, kind of took a little bit to uh, get my hand straightened out. Let's see. U.S. optics, good or bad? You know, I've only known, I knew one guy who shot him and had problems with him. And, like, in matches and things like that, and had several issues and ended up going to another optic. But, um, overall, I think they make good optics. I'm not sure they're real relevant. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I, I've been around a few of them. Uh, you know, like the Foundation series, I think. Uh, I, right. A couple of guys I knew that shoot that shot them really liked them, but I, I've never personally owned one. I know, I think, wasn't it Jake Vibbert was sponsored by them for a while? He ran US yeah. Optics or something? Chris Simmons was too. Uh, 22 east around the US optic. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some problems, but you know, that seems to happen. Um, I don't have any personal experience with them. So 23 inch loads, yeah. I do 
have one. I think if you or you can order one from, I think they may only show the 20 inch on the website, but they will make you a 20 inch free thing. So you kind of contact Moser before they drop the next batch and you kind of ask them for a 23 inch, then they'll, they'll spin you up. I wish I'd have got mine in 23. Yeah, you know, I have the 20 and the 23. My, and I haven't really ammo tested the 23 yet, but my 20 is a little bit better of a barrel. So I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it could just be happenstance, but I'd rather shoot a 23 inch barrel for sure. All right, let's see. Come back a little bit, calm. Do, 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 do. Did the, uh, was it Tree Feller or somebody? Did he ever answer back, say what kind of chamber he had? Um, I don't know. Tree Feller didn't let me take a look. Uh, mixed up 98 posted today that Federal Auto Match has come around to being good again. I haven't heard that, but I still have a bunch of old auto match, and I've only ever used it in like steel guns or like the. I've never used it in precision stuff. But as far as bulk ammo, I think that's probably the most precise ammo. I, I've seen auto match do all right at like 50 yard, you know, shooting groups at 50 or shooting a bench rest or something like that. But for like PRS, if we were going to stretch it out to distance, it just falls apart. So he's saying the same reamer on the Kenny, so I would guess that's the Kenny, Kenny's got stuff. like a dozen reamers. Right. <laughs> but I think the most common one he uses is like a JGS. Like most oh, reamers yeah. are based on anyway. Yeah. The weird thing is that's the one I don't have. Right. That's the one that was on my custom gun from Kenny, was mm -hmm. it? Yeah. I mean, I think they're all pretty close. Cool. What what's that? Uh, the one he put in my Curtis is that uh, Nevius, Nuvius, like ne that. yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I can't pronounce it. it. We don't know. We're too country for that. Oh, there we go. I wonder. Can I show that? I should be able to show the chassis, right? Not again. Yeah, let's try it. Not a gun, YouTube. Yeah. So, and I can't put the phonetic spelling because I got some Aussies in here. I call it the Maniel Sendejo. Um, it's not good at this because I was already supposed to send it to Chris, but I had like the last minute plans. Um, so that's why I don't have a rifle in this right now because I was supposed to send it to Chris. Well, he's over there. Um, but I'm kind of sandbagging it. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought you were going to have that in the mail like uh, a couple ago. Yeah, yeah. ago. Yeah, I took off. Uh, where is it? Yeah, it's up there. Uh, I put in the XLR for the map, and I may put it back, but I like it. So they, they won't boo this, I don't think. This is the original. So the new one had a lot of fixes. This one has a lot of sharp edges. Um, the new one fixed it, but as far as um, the chassis, it was like this a super solid, very rich chassis. I like the adjustment. Uh, you guys can't see it in this. I do like it. These big knobs make it really easy to uh, adjust these on the fly. The only complaints that I have about it is, and maybe you guys can see that, if you put the internal weights in here, you know, there's like, there's no way you can put an M lock hardware nut in there. So once you put an internal weight in that M lock space, can't really be used. You can work around that. And the only other thing I probably don't love is the uh, magazine catch is adjustable. You've got to undo it, take the magazine catch out, and then you move like a, a, a piece of hardware on it, and then put it back in and try. It. It's a little more difficult to adjust than others, but it is adjustable. So you know, there is that. But overall, it's it's a really good chassis. I mean, I like it, or it still wouldn't be sitting here. It'd be at Chris's place already, but I uh, kind of been bird dogging a little bit. 
Right. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to get a chance to run it. I'm not sure wh what I'm going to put in it yet. I thought about trying it with some center fire. I don't know who's so, so low printed, but that's a pretty dope uh, um, logo. I like the logo. I have a KGM uh, rimfire suppressor that I've been messing with here lately. Um, but as far as effect on group sizes, you know, think of it kind of like a tuner that you can't adjust. It's either going to be good or it's going to be bad. Pick one. Um, gets you a little more weight out there. But I, for shooting precision 22 matches, I personally would stay away from the suppressor just because I don't want all that carbon buildup going back down my barrel. Yeah. Uh, now, if we were in like a hunting situation, squirrel, what you know, whatever, whatever your reason for using it is, I think it's a great idea. Right. That's where I'd be at too. I see how it's a matter of harmonics, whether they help you or not, or hurt you on accuracy. But if you're carrying a PRS gun around with a suppressor and you go and set it down, you know, like butt first, um, you know, crap can come out of that suppressor and find its yeah. way in your chamber. It just it's totally unnecessary, um, especially if you're shooting a 20 inch or longer barrel. Uh, right. Here's a good one about barrels. So I'm not sure I have the exact answer for this, but um, from what I've seen, like I think Krieger is a more traditional rifle and you have like the Miller Works barrels are minimally evasive. I do see from my recent experimenting with the Miller Works, uh, the minimally evasive barrels or the rifling seems to kind of be less apt to have a cold core ship if for some reason. Um, I think maybe it's just that there's not as much friction on the bullet and so that whether in fact whether that loop is dry or still wet, it doesn't make a big of a difference. But um, I haven't I, done did, I noticed that on my Curtis from my voodoo to my Curtis because the Curtis right. has a eight gro eight groove minimal invasive molar. Mm -hmm. Where the uh, the where wherever it is the voodoo over there, it's a uh, Krieger Select, right? And uh, the the Krieger the voodoo has a I have a little bit of from right to left cold bore shift. Like if my zero is here, I'll be, which to you guys it's reversed, but I, I'm you know maybe eighth inch quarter inch to the right maybe on my first shot at 50 but right. if i'm shooting all day like it turns pretty minimal it almost goes away yeah. but that, that stage one is going to get me usually oh I'm gonna, i'll i was going to talk about it's going to be in a video but i'll, I'll spell it to you now no chris don't get excited these aren't the world small on them um yeah. off amazon and Oompa they're Oompa approved they're supposed to be like the little finger gloves. They just go for your finger. But the break Stewart was going on a testing a cold bore shift, especially recently. And uh, kind of what he figured out, and we kind of like working towards the same thing. He was putting these on the end of his barrel after he shot the thing, and then putting his PPI in. And what it was doing was it wasn't retaining heat, it was stopping air movement. Um, so what he figured out is that really not temperature because you know one twenty two round doesn't really much temperature in a barrel especially a straight two for a one and a quarter but uh, it was the fact that the first one was being shot like no lubrication in it like it has the bullet lube but it's an air movement so it dry it and then when you shoot that first round through it it's leaving water deposits behind it as a process of igniting the powder and things like that and you're getting a fresh thing of lube, you're getting basically like water in the barrel that's going to make it easier for the next round to get out of it. And every round after that, it's the same thing. And that's that's that core shift. It's not necessarily due to temperature, but a minimally invasive barrel can have less friction on it, which can make it less noticeable. Um, but he figured that out, and I have to test it on video. I mean, I've already tested it, and I would say it worked. I could shoot a cold war predictably, and then I could put this on in between the same time period and lose the cold. Or I could 
increase or decrease the time of my cold bore, how long it takes to set in by just putting in the barrel cooler in your barrel. If you run that for 30 seconds, that air blowing from it, you'll all of a sudden develop that cold bore and almost bleed. Um, so that's where I kind of like to go say, yeah, he's, he's on to something because, you know, it definitely seems to be more about air movement and drying that lubricant up. It's kind of funny how, you know, on rimfire, we're trying to figure out how to keep heat in the barrel. <laughs> where when I go shoot like a, uh, a, a center fire match, I need to throw a barrel, especially like in the months of July, August, what have you. I got to right. put a barrel cooler in there to keep from melting the daggum thing down. Yeah, it's like your best friend in center fire. It can be your worst enemy in rimfire. I, I thought Jake Vibbert was for sure. I didn't. I didn't know about Ken, but yeah. Right. I, and I yeah. know, you know, Jake's won more PRS matches than anybody else alive, I think, is is the ongoing deal. Right. <laughs> so the, they, they got to be a pretty decent scope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Tree Feller, um, I would love to come to Australia, but I can't, I can't make like 90% of my local matches. Yeah. <laughs> Before people. I, um, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but YouTube don't pay me enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> have either of you guys experienced with different coding? I haven't done it besides removing code and off projectile. A lot of interest guys get really big in that. They'll they'll like lube or coat their own bullet. Unless you're talking about lead versus I don't think it's a proper lot of bullets or anything. I'm thinking about going down that whole bench rest rabbit hole just a little bit with uh, which me and you talked about it earlier. You know, we like that and shoots I was looking at today. And then right, uh, my buddy's got that turbo that was built and uh, they're both of those guns will probably make a appearance on the, on the channel here sometime soon. Right. That's definitely for you. Wright City, Missouri. I can't say that I've been up there. No, sir. Uh, as far as Missouri ranges go, you know, you got uh, Iberia, which is Gadsden Shooting Center. Um, oh, God, the, the one down at Houston, Missouri, Big Piney. I shoot there. Um, Springfield Bench Rest Club over uh, Billings, Missouri. Uh Oh shoot! There, then we get up to like Lucas Oil Ranch and stuff like that. So, right. Uh, I was just seeing somebody posted a comment saying that my audio was coming in and out a little bit. So hopefully that fixes it. I'm just glad that you're the one having problems this time instead of me coming and going. Like, you know, normally I use a, I use a <laughs> laptop normally, but now I'm using this desktop for the first time, and it, yeah, it's a lot of problems. Um, it's weird we didn't have any trouble till we went live yeah it was perfect and that's it's always like web browser related um yeah the so the shaft which i know <laughs> people were expecting me to make a, a couple of jokes about this in the video but this thing uh, i guess you can get it between three and five pounds and this you know if i had something i didn't want to do anything else with i just need four weight I would put this on there. My only complaint is if I had to use a bipod and this, then you're kind of locked in with your bipod unless you totally eject it. But it's uh, we have some good ideas to help guys with factory guns. And let's see. You know what that thing kind of reminds me of? The some of them boys in Oklahoma, they were running a big old weight on the front of their Arca rails with yep. their like MTRCZs and stuff. Yeah, we had a guy. We got a couple guys in the Discord that they like machine their own weights down to make it look like an extension of the stock. But yeah, this is a super easy way to do it, and I really like that uh, the rail or the rail um, from DST. That thing is probably going to stay on the MTR because it just balances that gun perfectly, and I don't have to worry about it. It's got full length Arca. He even puts them on his ACC because it does come. It has like spots for M lock and M lock hardware. So you could put it on your ACC and have this nice big wide fore end on your ACC, which would be pretty neat too. I may give that a go at some point. Let's see. Ha! 
any news about Lapua making enough fan for no, I don't I think they're gonna be behind the curve for a long time. Yeah. Ooh, I, I hope not. I, I'm no. tired of not being able to find anything. Yeah, I mean the channel? What's the channel? Nah, I'm, pretty sure <laughs> I'm sorry. Promise. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help myself. I said that I think I, I think we're gonna be looking at a price increase across the board. I've been seeing a lot about it and I've seen some things, and I think you're gonna be looking at it at like a significant percentage price increase on rip fire ammo coming into 2024. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, why are you well, that bad on me, Ricky Bobby? Right. Running shill and ratchet wise Ely hundred for Ely's always faster than SK. So SK and my only real stab in the dark of this is, is SK and Lapua are, are mostly marketed to the United States. Like they have a big part of their market is the US and I think they're very in tune with that fact. We run 16, 18, and 20 inch barrels, or we used to. That was the norm. Ely comes from a European company who primarily makes ammunition for like Olympic shooters who are shooting 24, 26, and even 20 inch barrels. So that much barrel, the extra powder is going to kind of, you know, it's. That's why you would see on the box, it will say like 1052 and out of your gun is shooting 1110 uh, because yeah. it was probably tested in a 26 to 28 inch barrel, not your 20, 22, 24 inch barrel. So Ely's always yeah, that's fast. I don't think, I don't think enough guys have ever touched on including us is the fact that if like, if you're shooting a 20 to 18 to 22 inch barrel over here, if you're buying Ely, don't buy the 1080 or the 1100 yeah, God, no. or whatever. <laughs> you need to be looking for that like 1050, 1060 territory. Yeah. And a lot of them do fall there um, anyway, just by happenstance. But yeah, it's it's considerably faster and always has been. <clears throat> I don't think maybe Chris will know the 5R ratchet rifle for like, uh, I'm not sure if that's minimally evasive or not. It's supposed to be less invasive, a little less bullet deformation. I mean, but this five right. R is mainly a center fire thing, and it also keeps the barrel from fouling out as quickly. Five uh, R. Uh, there was a lot of development around it for military application and ease right. of cleaning and stuff like that. So, hey, Lima Romeo. Yeah, Michael said. Oh, let me go in there. So the audio is fixed now, but. Probably a little on the loud side. It's this. this setup. Let me. Nope, I'm, I'm just right naturally there. loud. I can't help it. Yeah, I'll talk a little quieter. I'll try not to, to yell at you guys. <laughs> oh, it's That's always something. I yell at everybody. Right. Let's see. This is one for you. I'm accurate loading co. That was a curse. Curtis stand in terms of accuracy with. Removable barrels, da, 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 da. feeds the 22s just fine. Uh, one thing I will say is if you're thinking about having the rimfire barrel chambered up, probably ignore Curtis's uh, tenon print as far as the they want that cone breech. Um, mine is more typical to what would be in like a voodoo uh, with the extractor cuts in it. I think uh, Kenny's doing it that way, and so is – I can't remember them other guys. I think they're in Texas or something. I can't remember what their name is. Do you remember, Josh? Doing – well, I missed it. I was messing with the mic. The other guys building Curtis's and Voodoo's, I think they're out of Texas. Oh. Uh, is it DI uh, or something? Maybe it maybe is DI. I think, I think they were doing more of a, a Voodoo-style breach on that. Uh, so far with the the rimfire barrel, the accuracy has been uh, very, very good. It's on par with the Voodoo uh, right, right there. Um, that gun has always shot really good and continues to. Uh, the center fire barrel, I'm, uh, I'm kind of being lazy on that, if you want to know the truth, and <laughs> just simply have not uh, got to test it very much yet. Uh, I've had a lot going on in my own uh, personal life so work new job all that kind of stuff so excuses. i need to get on that so all i hear yeah. is excuses ah uh, yeah 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 well you, you, you know you know those excuses better than been i'm than the master 
of the excuses. So I answer this one real quick. Uh, yeah, the Discord is a Patreon thing, also for YouTube members. Um, YouTube members uh, basically just message me. Um, I'm trying to integrate it. It's a pain in the butt. I probably should have, instead of doing Discord, I should have hosted it myself. But yeah, and uh, Shooter B posted about that. But yeah, I'm going to have to give that uh, a try on the ACC. I got a few ACCs and I do appreciate the fact that it's wider. It's a lot wider than the ACC from the Air Four end, so could be a good thing. Have you considered? Have you messed with the Elite yet? No. Hmm. Yeah, out. money. Money has been. I want to try one bad, but the channel money has just been non-existent. And then obviously I keep breaking crap. So <laughs> I, I know it looks like I got a, a, a manners addiction, but. I love my ACC Elite. Yeah, I want to try one just for the longer forehand and the adjustability for the catch from the inside. I, that to me, just, but outside of that, I don't think it's going to be noticeably different um, outside of those things. But I haven't shot one yet, so I'm going to be full of crap. Yeah. Oh, did you see uh, Mr. Uh, Romeo Lima Romeo is in here? 22 Lima Romeo? I called him out just a little bit ago. Oh, I missed it. I don't listen to you. I mean, that should be obvious at this point. Yeah, you were yeah, talking about saying. that ACC Elite, and I tell you what, I feel bad because I don't run it on the rim fires, but my my six millimeter Creedmoor center fire build, it's a little lighter profile barrel than what I'm used to running. Uh oh, Josh right. has dropped off. Oh, there he is. Huh? But what? Maybe it was me. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, my 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 six mil Creedmoor centerfire builds a little lighter barrel, um, and that ACC Elite just the weight of the chassis combined with how much weight I can stack on it, yeah, it's it's just too invaluable in that rig, and I just cannot separate them. Right, I love both the ACC and the XLR like equally and for totally different reasons, like. The XLR, which you can see it up there, is like with well, that C6 buttstock is so nice. The cheek rest is so nice, but it has a short forend. So the ACCs have a longer forend, and I like the looks of that too. Um, and if you need, like in Rimfire, and if you're doing a lot of different things with a chassis, it can be the better chassis sometimes because sometimes you need to put weights all the way up to the front of that forend. To do what you need to do with it or if you want to run a bear um i don't know i like both of them i do need to try the elite though i'm being a bum kind of on that I, I wanted to try i still want to try that furiosa ultra one of these days yeah i mean that's uh all the way up top is it yep yeah my only complaint is i can't show it is the arca does not go all the way back to the magwell area there's about that much of it that doesn't have Orca. So if you want to run, like we all know the Bergaras are super finicky about mag. Like if you touch a mag on a Bergara, it's it's got issues. And it's not a good way for me to protect a mag on it right now in that. Uh, of course, you could do something else. Could be crazy and throw a, a rail on it. And then you would be good. You could slide that arc all the way back. But... I hope they come out with a Gen 2, and when they do, I hope that uh, that's one thing that they uh, change, is that they run the full-length Orca all the way back to the Magwell to the bottom middle. We got Mr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark G, the ammos, it's always going to – I've shot some in 1090s, but, yeah, it's really – if you get up to about a 24-inch or, or longer barrel, which is where I think the trend is moving now for PRS, you're looking at 24-inch barrels as a norm. Uh, you'll see this slow down a little bit. Mr. Dave Crunk, appreciate you, brother. Um, thoughts on long gun matches. They, I haven't heard of any being down here. I think it's mostly up north. Chris, have you heard? Have you guys had any long gun matches? The closest thing we had to it was that Athlon deal. Right. I think, and I really like the long gun match thing that is happening because and this is going to sound weird unless you fit in this category, but if you're an older shooter, you can't shoot PRS, but you want to have the 
the same rifle and you want to kind of do the same thing, you want to shoot long range without it being like F class on paper. Now you can go shoot this long gun. So you got a reason to play with the gun. You got a reason to shoot 300 yards and play with ammo. Well, there, there is a match in, I think they do it in Minnesota, uh, up in New York Mills, Minnesota. It's uh, the king of 0.28 mile. Right. Yeah, the problem is that's like an isolated man, I wanted thing. I've to go to that for like two years, and I just can't yeah. seem to get up there. Me too, and that and that's why I like these long run matches because I would like to see people start adopting them. It's a cool format, and uh, hopefully, it, and I'm hoping the two gun um, rim fire, like the DMR rim fire stuff, starts uh, kind of popping off a little bit more. I'm going to film the first one we do out here, and hopefully, some match directors will see it and say, "Hey." Uh, you know, this is a good idea because it's so much more fun when you're shooting PRS, NRL 22. That stuff is fun. Don't get me wrong. But when you've got handguns, well, I can never get the right hand. <laughs> when you got handguns, you haven't shot in a super long time. And all of a sudden you got a two gun match and you got to shoot on the clock, pistol and rifle, where it's, you know, handgun, steel, and then rifle for precision rifle. It's a lot of fun. And it kind of brings you back to reality. But like, hey, I need to, you know, kind of be on both these uh, the, I'm I don't necessarily have to shoot both but I, I'm I'm really excited about the NRL hunter stuff uh, right. as I went ahead and drug out the NRL hunter lightweight rig right there the Curtis and 65 Creed and it, you just brush up on skills right uh, right that, that you're not practicing in PRS yeah there's uh, because, yeah PRS is one one small game. This is a, I don't have a real answer for this, but I'm going to take my uneducated guess at this. And based on the purpose deformation of bullets that I've done on video, um, I don't think that the less invasive or more invasive, like grooves in the bullets, are going to make it more susceptible to spin drift, I think, or wind drift, or, you know, like wind steerability or anything like that. I think that's just really a matter of uh, BC. Um, the only thing I've noticed for sure, you know, is barrel twist. You know, you go the fastest barrels, you're going to get more spin drift. But I don't think that the barrel, as far as the rifling, is going to impact spin drift. And maybe Chris thinks differently. I, I don't think about spin drift, but I do think about SDs and extreme spread, right? If that, depending on, you know, and this could be a very extreme example, right? If those right. riflings are so, so deep that, your bullet can expand to cover some of that and you end up with gas, you know, blow by think about like in a cylinder, right? right. On an engine, you get blow by the rings are wore right. out. So you'll lose velocity, stuff like that. So here's a good one. And I know Grant knows. It. So I'm going to say the easy answer is I never clean my barrel. I clean my <laughs> chamber every 200 rounds and I clean my bolt every 200 rounds. And then the only cleaning my barrel gets is, first two patches and the last two patches that I pushed through to clean up the chamber, but I never actually aggressively cleaned the barrel past the actual chamber. Yeah. For me, you know, if, if I got two different methods, right? So I got match season and then I got not match season. Right. Match season, I because I, I suck at round count, I'm cleaning after every match, but it's like Josh said, I'm doing the chamber First couple patches through the barrel, last couple patches through the barrel. Um, if I know I'm coming out of match season and I want to try something new, try some new ammo, whatever, uh, I might do a scrub down, you know, run a brush through it and what have you. But it, it, and in the off season, I'm probably only cleaning chamber every 500 rounds. Right. I'll run and a brick. Grant, I know. Uh... I know you got an elite because I called them boys talking to them about elite and they were like, Oh, Grant got that one. I was like, Yeah. Hey, Watts, I, I, I'm going to, I love the elite over the uh, Matrix Pro, but man, I tell you, I, I think MPA figured something out right there in that grip. That grip feels good. It takes a second to get used to, but once you do, but then, like the fore end, you know, without I don't got used to the Baker wings, so 
I'm screwed. I can never go back. But <laughs> <laughs> but just the, the I had Tom's uh, Matrix Pro there for a little bit and got to run it, and I just I, I couldn't really get used to it. It didn't it didn't feel like I had anything to hang on to. Right. You know, I got a good idea, Chris. Where is my Kestrel? Dude, I ain't shot a match in forever. I don't even know where mine is. Let's see. We got some 22 guys. I haven't done anything like this in a while. So you guys saw the video. DSD sent me uh, the shaft and the rail. Uh, the rail's not going anywhere. I do not have a personal need for this right now. So I'm going to pull up my profile, and I'm going to give you guys in mill a drop at a distance. The first person to get within five feet per second of my muzzle velocity, I'm gonna ship you this for free. Unless you're Australian, in which case I don't like you anyway, I'm not sending you crap. That's one of them hashtag giveaway moments, right? Yeah, that's actually just for tree pillar. And I would send it to tree pillar, I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure I'm on the right gun. Okay, I am. Let's see. Let me go to a distance that I think most people will be familiar with, but one far enough that I think people will still be able to figure it out. Now, it says a 50 yard zero. We'll go 150 yards. 3.89 mils. That's my drop at 150 yards. Post on there in the chat the muzzle velocity. And First person within five feet per second wins. I'm about to scroll down to the bottom. Ha! No. Three teller trying to sneak in there early. And we'll do one one guess per person. And then if nobody gets it, we'll run back to it real quick. Oh, that didn't <laughs> take long. <laughs> Joel Seaford, you are a winner. Let me uh, see. I don't think I'm full of crap. Uh, can you see? Oh, let's get, get my face. 1103 feet per second. So Joel Seifert with 1107 snuck right in there. Tree feller was one foot per second off. That was pretty good. That was pretty quick. Wait, you're at what? 11 or what? Uh, 1103. So there's the voodoo. 1106. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So let me put it in the chat for Joel. I need you to email me at my josh at pursuit of accuracy.com. You email me and just shoot me your address and I'm going to send you it, this out to you in the mail. Let's you going to put that chassis in the mail to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll, we might do another one i got some more stuff floating around here so maybe here in a little bit we'll do another one um, oh, now you got me looking around the room i'm like what what have right. i got <laughs> let's see and uh if uh joel make sure you give dsg a like on he doesn't know i'm doing this he's probably gonna be pissed <laughs> i'm giving away <laughs> stuff. Like, you're giving but, away my stuff hey it's all right you know He's good people, and uh, he actually he hit me up, and he was just uh, he told me, hey, um, it was exactly how I was telling the video, exactly how it went down. He was, hey, I make a bunch of stuff for uh, NRL 22 guys, and I'd be interested to see what you think about it. He didn't say, hey, will you make a video? He would just want to send it over to see what I thought about it. And as soon as I saw the rail thing, I had to make a video. I was like, this thing is awesome, and it's so popular now, and I'm not going to hate. Don't worry. It's you. I'm not hating on you. So many people like want to be production factory class and part of me gets it. There are so many guys who have like so much experience shooting open to beat those guys is crazy. But um, if you're trying to shoot production or factory at the rail thing or just the shaft that now doesn't belong to me, um, cheap options. And especially if, or if you're open, you just don't want to buy a chassis if you're not looking at that kind of money. But anyway, to the question. Left-handed chassis or stock? The XLRs are left-handed or right-handed. Am, yeah, Ambi. But for CZ, I think you can only get the Element 4.0, which is not bad. It's only right-handed, isn't it? Uh, let me look. I, I got one somewhere. Uh, 
don't know where I stuck it. Oh, let me look. Probably in that pile of stuff over. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, you got rich guy problems when you can't find your chassis. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It's righty only. Yeah. So for CZ. Well, you know Bobby, right? Yeah. Our, our mutual buddy, Bobby. Yeah. He he got a uh, a left-handed CZ because he's he's a lefty, but he mm -hmm. got it off one of the Missouri Misfits guys. Right. Uh, Deej, actually. But uh, yeah. he, he got it, and he had that uh, – what's that other chassis that's out there? I can't think of it. Um, the green one he had. Crap. The Oryx? No, not an Oryx. It, it, it's a smaller company. ARG um, Bravo? No, it's a full metal chassis. PDC Damn. Customs? Huh? PDC Customs? Yes, yes, PDC. Well, Bobby's about, you know, he's a, he used to be a machinist at one point, I think. And he, he just chucked the thing up in a mill and he made it ambidextrous. Yeah, I mean, you could. It's, I don't know. It's such a hard thing on factory guns for left-handers. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it kind of sucks because we're going to have one. Um, but yeah, sorry. First time listener about to get a precision well factory rifle, CZ 457 top before custom or ooh, 457 is more reliable to me. It's just accurate. Both are can be really accurate, but the B14R gives you 700 compatibility. So it really comes down to I, I would I, I every time somebody asks me this, I ask them, okay, are you a center fire shooter? Right. Do you have Remington 700 stuff? Right. Are you dedicated to that platform? If not, go CZ. Yeah. If you have all this stuff already, you know, you got triggers, you got stocks, you got chassis, by all means, head down the Bagara road, I think. Right. Yeah. No, they're good. And I mean, you can do a lot of things with a Bergara. You can do a lot of things with a CZ. Um, yeah, that's about how I usually answer it too with people. If you're not, if you don't want a trainer, then just get a CZ. If you want a trainer, something that's going to be cross compatible with your big gun, then you're probably going to want to get a Bergara. Hey, my, uh, the show kind of my problem. I got two of each. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I don't have two. CZs. I got two CZs and the one Bergara, so I'm not as bad as you. Uh, Tree Feller, actually, uh, funny enough, that my busted KYL was the first gen shooting target seven, and he sent me the replacement paddles. They don't make the paddles like that anymore because they were breaking. Um, and I put thousands of rounds on that KYL, but um, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, DM targets. Uh, someone asked Seth, maybe Seth. Gar I'm terrible with names, but he saw my last video or the video before last, and he's actually sending me KYL. He didn't want to be plugged or anything. He just said, Hey, I see that it's busted up. I want to send you one. You don't have to plug me. Um, I just, just drive me nuts. And I don't have any of the DM targets. I know they're really good targets. So hopefully I'll get that in. And that will replace the old Gen 1 shooting target 7. Uh, the Gen 2 is super solid. I think I've got the DMs is two good. on my range. Right. Yeah. And I mean that Gen One. I've got. I took it up Missouri with me um, yeah. when we were out there. So it laid in my Gen shop One for a while. Right. Yeah. I mean, we put rounds <laughs> on that thing. That thing has um, tank. So twenty-five inch Muller works average eleven, twelve. Our mine shoots R fifty fast too. Probably Chris's does yeah. as well. Dude, I put R fifty in my Voodoo, and it is scary accurate. At 50 right. Oh, here, this one's for you before we go on to that one. Tom's here. We can begin now. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Hey, yeah. hey Tom, what, what's up with the boat, man? Yeah, <laughs> I know. He's selling, Tom's so into Rimfire now. He's selling boats to buy more Rimfire stuff. Dude, yeah. He, he le Like, he's getting out of boats, and I'm getting in. <laughs> right. And I've, but I, I've I'm never, not buying I'm, his boat. I, I don't do I, that stuff. I've never been into. Like, my dad owns a boat, so that's the best 
case scenario. Yeah. I don't just spend any money on it. If everybody sees this giant TP stack over here, nothing but fishing right. rods stacked in that corner. Yeah, you you've gone kind of crazy. So who else <laughs> got close here? Who dang, Chris pick eleven six. Why he leading that fast? Well, Tree Feller said, you got to account for the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> I wouldn't give you that one foot per second if you paid me to. <laughs> oh, shoot. I do love me some Tree Feller, though. He's a good dude. Man, it looks like Let's I have horns. He said, good for Joel. He actually need Well, good. I'm glad. And uh, like I said, email that with your address because I'll get that in uh, the mail UPS to you on Monday. So you'll have it midweek no problem at all brother Glad I got. sometimes you as a gun tuber i end up with things that i either buy or reach out and get and just have no use for and so glad i thought about it let's see factoring in that some batches perform better than others do you think it's bullet diameter or weight of the bullet when put through the mullet cause this i actually don't think so i think match ammo is sorted and graded very well. I think it's speed. Um, I think that your barrel is going to like a bullet at a certain speed, harmonically. And I think that's really the difference, as you see. You know, of course, some lots are better than others with SD and ES. You know, some lots just suck. It's not really good, but you can have similar SD and ESs in lots that shoot totally different. I think that mostly comes down to harmonically how much your barrel likes that speed of that bullet and your chamber and all sorts of things. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Questions. Oh, from Russia. That, that's a first for me. <laughs> I, I've got pe I've had people from all over the place. It just seems like Rus Russia has not found my channel. <laughs> right. Let's see. Who runs matches between New Orleans and Wisconsin? Good God, I have no idea. Dude, that's the whole country. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, practice score runs matches between New Orleans and Wisconsin. I think. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Preferred barrel length. Right now, 24 to 25 inches. I usually yeah. try and get a blank that'll finish at 24 to 25, and then I just tell if it's Jonathan spinning up, I just say, Finish it where it finished it. I don't care. That that's the main thing I think guys forget about. They get so hung up on on a certain barrel length. Slug that have your gunsmith slug that barrel and finish it where it's supposed to be finished, where at that choke point or whatever. Right. You know, li listen to your smith. Don't get hung up on the number. Right. Let me pull out a piece of this snellier. And actually, yeah. So I'm going to test this. This is like $6 a box or something like that. That's, I don't know how to pronounce it. Cellular and Bellow, but DSD sells this. He sent me a box for that other stuff to try. Um, but this is for this question. Heard somewhere that extractors prefer magazine feed versus single feed round. Is that true? I would say that's probably true and only because when that bullet comes out of the mag, it's intended to go up into the face of the bolt behind the extractor and holder already. So, and then it stays there until it's, it gets out. So, I don't know that's bad for it, but if you were single feeding it, you're basically wearing it twice as fast. So, whereas a bullet could just go into the bolt face and then come out and be shot out, now you're having to, you know, go around those and back onto the bullet and then out. I don't. Uh, I don't know that it can be bad for it necessarily, but certainly twice as much use as it should be getting. I got a question for the group. I just want to know, like, is is anybody other than like me and Josh looking into alternative rim fire competitions outside of the say the PRS or the NRL? You know, and if so, what are they? Because yeah, I'm curious. I want to know what else is out there. What is this one here? Since you're holding that weight, James was the clown. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you with that entire arc rail fit on an older MPA hybrid chassis. How short are the four ends on those? 
the hybrid? Yeah, I might have to look it up. I might have to Google and see what it looks like. I, I think it would fit. I mean, that hybrid, it might be an inch or so shorter than that MTR behind you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's M lock on the bottom. I don't see why it wouldn't fit. Yeah. So, yeah, I get it would 100% fit. It is just going to stick out. Wide. Yeah, it, well, it's going to be super wide. It's going to hang out a lot, um, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. It's the same XLR does it. They have those extended nose pieces. I like that, actually. Yeah, because that MPA hybrid, man, that thing is super narrow in the front. <laughs> That's one definitely for you. <laughs> What? No, it's his wife's here and both of us in the background. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Megan. Hey. Hello. Your husband's yeah. an alcoholic. Oh, right. did I say that out loud? <laughs> Would be nice for weight. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's going to be, that's the best part about for that sure. thing. If you're struggling to get, you know, weight up front without going to a different barrel, that thing is going to for sure be good. Watching from the Philippines. Appreciate it, brother. Oh, that's cool, man. Man, one of my favorite weighted Arca rails that people don't talk about a lot is the uh, uh, 360 Precision. Right. And, and they build it mainly like it's purpose built for like the, uh, oh, uh, for like an Anschutz rail in the bottom of a foundation. Yeah. But like I mounted one to the bottom of my, uh, uh, pro varmint on my CZ, and I shoot, dude. I love that thing. Yeah, I think they're just the problem is they got beat to the market or better marketing job on Area 419 and their weighted one. So that's kind of like the one everybody thinks about. They're, they're, they're nice too, they're just expensive. Yeah, I so, mean, I have several of them, I can't say nothing. I think. Right. That gun's got a area 419. I can see two or three of them right there. Right. But I buy a lot of used stuff, and sometimes the stocks and chassis I buy have them are on them already. <laughs> that never hurts. That's for sure. <laughs> Scott says, have you compared the lots that work for speed? I, I kind of know where my guns like to be, um, but I don't use it as a hard rule, like especially the box. If you're talking about like if the box says 1052 and it shot really great, do I try and buy 1052 again? Heck no, because the box is almost never right. Like I've had lots that were like marked exact same speed on the box and shot 20 feet per second different in my rifle. Um, you know, they that's a reference point for them out of their barrel to give you an idea. But at the end of the day, that velocity on the box means basically nothing now chronograph muzzle velocity i can typically find success in lots that shoot very close to the same muzzle velocity here's a good one <laughs> so this is interesting so scott valcourtson actually emailed me and i thought it was scott at valcourtson but no it's like the president scott valcourtson and he emailed me to say, one, hey, sorry that it didn't meet your expectations. And two, like, um, we're, we are testing on more factory barrel. They want to know if my barrel was factory. I did tell them it was. And they basically like taking it very serious about getting back and fixing whatever is not working on the bow course extractors to make them work. And I had heard some people prior to the video who said that like they were kind of getting roadblocks on getting in exchange or something done and that seems to have went away everybody who i know has had issues who have contacted them they've taken care of them now as far as either refunding or exchanging and so they're kind of proactively working it right now i don't know when the fix will come but uh it is nice to see that they're interested in fixing it because trust me val Corson did not have to respond to that video val Corson, as a company could care less about my one youtube video not having success with their extractors. Um, so for them to respond and say they're working on it when they don't need to because they're gonna sell product no matter what, it's a pretty good sign. So um, I'm pretty happy about that and look forward to actually testing something if they you know, work something out on it for sure. Heck yeah, that is cool to hear that a company's actually taking some, taking action. Right, 
Oh man, I gotta. We gotta start stripping or something. Take clothes off, Chris. Oh. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, Chuck. Man, that was 100% unnecessary, but much appreciated. I mean, we're going to watch Chris Tritt now. Let me turn back on the music. Whoa. Wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. The, the, <laughs> does that mean we're splitting this? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, well, I may have to give that. I may have to split that up to the audience and split 50 bucks 84 ways for the pain and suffering. <laughs> there you there. go. 84 yeah. ways. There we go. Back no, to the verify. We're mean, leaving the brass. You see it. I mean, it's all hairy. <laughs> right. Oh, we'll get you wax first. Um, you could leave the brass in there. I think so. For more practical reasons, I think the ECI would be better if you're at a match because um, that ECI, like especially the Haas and Shield one, the magnetic, it's going to stop the airflow. But yeah, you could leave the brass in there. Like if you're just at your own place fire it and just leave the bolt closed and then put that, put something over the barrel. And he actually shoots through it. He doesn't take it off. Uh, the next stage, he just shoots through it. And it's so thin. Um, that's another thing I want to test on video. Um, and I got to give him credit. Because what it does. Yeah. He said nothing. He don't, and he's a, he's a very serious PRS rimfire shooter, like a, and a, a contender. So, you know, Oh, no, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, we're all shooting crazy heavy barrels anymore. I wouldn't think harmonics would be something I'd be worried about there. No. Yeah. Hmm. Like putting a sticker on your, you know, straight Tabor Krieger. Not going to, yeah. it's not going to do anything. Um, but yeah, back to appreciate you, Chuck, for sure. Um, I don't think I've seen him, at least not recently on here. Appreciate you showing up. Let's see. Yeah. ARA. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it. about getting into that ARA bench rest. Like I said, right. that, uh, I, I've been I've been keeping an eye out, looking for like a turbo action or something, maybe to build. Um, like I said, we were looking at an Anschutz 54 today, model 54, older one, like West Germany stuff. But then, you know, didn't work out for me. Leave it to Tom to bring up the cash matches. <laughs> well, and I, I, you know, I, Tom is, he's going to be my partner at that outlaw hunter match that's coming up. Matt Woody. There he is. I saw him. You, yeah. There he is. Fast. Matt Woody. Yep. Big Matt Woody. He's one of the Missouri misfits from, uh, I think he's Matt's one of the match directors at Iberia now for the NRL monthly matches. Oh, nice. Yep. So we got a couple of hunter match guys, uh, silhouette, to stay sharp. Um, yeah, silhouette's something that I, I would suck at. I can't shoot that damn crap. See, I, you know, I had that little uh, oh, Anschutz 1712 silhouette gun. Right. And uh, I, I'd sure, I don't know, I'd like to try it out maybe, see how it goes. I've never, I've never shot right. silhouette. A long range varmint match. We got another one for ARA Factory and Unlimited. Yeah. Chris asked about other matches when Locus put NRL X type of longest target, like 430. That's, I want to see more 400 to 450 yard max targets yeah. on these matches. I think I think the sport is big enough now. And if you make it an IPSC, it's you know, you don't need special equipment to hit an IPSC. It's just a lot more fun. Yeah, and well, like, uh, uh, well, me and me and Josh call him D'Artagnan, but uh, Dalton Cassidy, <laughs> the uh, Red Rooster, he, the Red Rooster man. He he uh, the, he matched your ex down in Ava, Missouri, at the Beaver Creek Rimfire, and he runs that big KYL rack out there. I think it's a, like somewhere between four hundred four thirty. He moves it around a little bit. But, yeah, uh, that's always a a good. The thing is, though, it's elevated, and it's there's no backstop. There's woods, so you can hear um, those bullets cracking through the trees. But you, yeah. if you don't hit a target, you have no idea what just happened. Yeah. I like that actually. That makes it um, it's punishing. And he says, it, "Any pros well, and cons even between both?" Oh, oh, yeah, oh, you're, you're good. Go ahead. It, on that particular stage that Dalton sets up, you know, there's like a 200, a 300, and the four something, right? Right. And the two and three hundred are up on they're in fence posts up out of the hay field, and the target is you know five foot off the ground. 
if you miss, you just miss. Like, oh no, you, I you remember really that. Top of it. We shot that so, same kind of light stage yeah. of that. Yeah, freaking pain in the butt. Yeah. But uh, any pros and cons between bull barrel and tapered? I would say, not if you're if you're shooting PRS, you're not going to want a tapered barrel because you're losing weight for balance to the rifle. But outside of that, you know, a lot of uh, profiles are tapered. Like um, straight is probably you know up until recently, you know, been not the norm. Tapered yeah. barrels are pretty much always been the norm. So, as far as like just straight up accuracy. I can't tell a lot of difference between the two because like my voodoo, shoot, I did it again backwards. The white stock here, it's M24 taper. My Curtis is full blown straight taper. Right. Accuracy. I can't tell much difference. Um, stability on the bag, the Vo or the uh, Curtis takes it hand to sit down with the added weight, but lugging it around all day and being able to, to, you know, shooting because shooting obviously with the 22, we're not worried about recoil beating us up, but I, I don't know about you guys, but I have like a messed up rotator cuff in this shoulder and just carrying my, my gear from stage to stage, especially them real long kind of hikes. You know, you got three, 400 yards between stages right. sometimes. And uh, I, I'm really hurting with that straight taper burrow by the time I get there. So, you know, yeah, Love hate relationship for me. Yeah. I like to wait. Appreciate you, brother. And we got uh, Mr. Lima Romeo. Has anyone seen a plate that rivals the Gray Ops Mini? Huh. I mean, I ran. Where is it? I don't run a plate, so I'm I'm, I'm not your guy. Right. I used to run, and you can see how modified this is. Uh, this is a four one nine plate. This is actually. Uh, epoxied with tungsten shot. So this is like adds like two or three pounds of weight to the bottom of the rifle. I used to run plates, but I don't anymore. Now that I run the Gray Ops weights, I just don't see a need um, to have a plate in my way, I guess. Uh, it does help with stability, but with those Gray Ops weights sticking off the side of the format, it, it works pretty good for me without it. So let's see. Jim says, hey, oh, here's a good one. Best solution for strip scope mount screws on holes on receiver. I would say one best solution is somebody who can weld, drill, and tap it. And then, or um, what do they call them, Chris? You would know. It's, uh, oh, uh, tap and die? No, the, the little nut search. Or, no. The little fake thread things you can you can drill it oh, out. Oh, helicoil. Helicoil, yeah. No, um, I, I thought would, you meant like strip screw heads. My bad. Right, strip scope mount screw holes. Those screw holes. Oh, screw the holes. Stuff. Yeah, I think yeah, I would have a welded right in front of that, and the cords are covering <laughs> up some of the words. Yeah. Yeah. He's just answering. Uh, Lima Romeo. Do they even make helicoils that small? No, probably not. I would just get it welded, I think. Couldn't I have a thing that weld it or just tap it out to the next bigger size, right? Yeah, that's what everybody I know, that's what they do. They'll uh, go find somebody who has a TIG welder, right? You know, TIG it up, drill it out, re tap it. You just got to, whoever's doing your welding, you got to be really careful. I mean, so welding is something I deal with in my my regular job life, and the effects that welding has on the on the parent metals around it, right. uh, the uh, the metallurgical effects, you know, the at the at the atomic level and whatever, how the molecules are reacting, and it, as you put that heat into that action, right, you can you're affecting the temper of it. Especially, you know, on rim fire, not a big deal. You go to center fire, uh, especially magnums or something, I get pretty nervous. Uh, right. Especially if somebody doesn't really truly know what they're doing and how to control it. Right. This, uh, I don't have any carbon fiber sleeve barrels. <laughs> well, that's that, that one's wrapped. Right. Uh, I think, yeah. I mean, I've never, I've, I know people who run them and have never had issues. 
the the right. sleeved ones uh that's like the bagara b14 right. um it, it is literally a sleeve it's not wrapped all the way to the core and it's like i think it's like under tension of some sort if i remember right kind of like an it reminded me of like an air rifle right i would think yeah. if, if there's any downside to it it's probably the same as having a very thin profile barrel and the fact that it's going to be up really quickly or Man, more they, quickly. they react really well to a tuner believe it or not oh, i bet yeah because it's much lighter yeah my, my brother-in-law he's got a bagara uh, with a carbon barrel we put right. my old ats tuner on it just my barrels are too heavy anymore they don't react to them right uh and that and i just i got tired of messing with it but yeah like legit shooting uh sk standard plus i believe we right were, i mean we went from what inch and a quarter inch inch and a quarter groups at 100 to, and i brought him down to three quarter maybe a little under and i mean it was consistent so that's pretty good i, I don't know it, it, they work this is for uh, just a comment on 22's post. That's why I quit using plates because you only have so much under the rail here that when you add a plate to it, all of a sudden that ledge is dropped down to, let me get it to work in the camera there. It's dropped down to next to nothing. And I have very few rim fires that I can load into. And surprisingly, the Voodoo is one of them. Like the Voodoo I can load into the magazine, doesn't matter. But for a lot of rim fires, it gets you in trouble. So that's why I went away from the plates so that I could get the entire engagement of the Magwell and uh, just run those plates on the side. And then they'll make the foreign a lot wider without having to have a plate to lose that Magwell. Now, doesn't the gray ops plate don't they integrate their their barricade yeah. stop into it? Yeah, you can use the barricade stop on the gray ops one, which is probably what a lot of people do. Um, I just assume run the I don't like having I don't want to build height anywhere. Like I like the gun to be as far down and into the bag as I can possibly get it. Just makes me feel a little bit better about shooting off of props, but Man, that that height buildup you're talking about that'll get you on on a cattle gate. Yeah, well, and I'm not even worried about the height not fitting in. Yeah, they yeah, get smaller. But with us, we got these super heavy scopes up top. But I like to get as much of that bag up and around the rifle as I can, um, and that kind of helps me lock it inside to side, especially since I'm going to reach up and grab the objective of that scope kind of pull it down into the bag keeps it from wanting to like walk on me left or right i feel um get another guy running oh, outlaw x matches bad josh <clears throat> let's see i have the book the art of rimfire i haven't bought the book i've seen a lot of people talking about that book but i'm not a book guy i just can't get into it anymore that's a d'artagnan thing Read right, the book. the books. Here's one, the two-gun rimfire. If you shoot one, you'll be hooked. If you like pistol stuff and precision rifle, it's, it's a ton of fun. I mean, it's a lot of freaking fun. Here's a good one. <laughs> How much shooting a week do you do? In the wintertime in North Carolina, not that much because the wind sucks every day. What do you think? Need to be competitive. NRL 22 PRS matches. Oh, God. Um uh, to be really competitive, yeah, like really, really competitive, I think you need to shoot a match every week, and I think you need to practice at least twice a week. But as much practice as match experience, the guys who are really winning are shooting 50-plus matches a year. And, I mean, that's where you've got to weigh, like, what do you want to be? Do you want to be the best shooter in PRS? Then you got to commit, and you're going to – those guys are – you know, that's what they're doing is shooting matches. They're not they're not doing a Chris, they're not fishing most of the time and then shooting a match. They're not <laughs> making YouTube videos most of the time and then shooting a match. They're shooting matches yeah. almost every week, if not two matches a week. And yeah, they're out there the guys are doing it. I mean, and if they're not shooting full like if they're not doing 
they've got some kind of training regiment, right? Uh, whether it be dry fire, whether it be live fire, whatever it is, um, they, they are very, very diligent and they are burning through some ammo. I mean, holy crap. Some of the, the top guys I know in our area, they, they were really getting it done. <laughs> Tyler, they're, uh, they're my shoes and they're size 10, but they're going to cost you a thousand dollars. And if you're hanging out with Josh, he needs the knee pads. Yeah, I require them. Not for the shooting match. I don't wear them. <laughs> Somebody actually yeah. asked me the other day about that, too, about knee pads. I hate knee pads at shooting matches because I just I can't stand to shoot off a knee pad. I don't know what it is. I just hate the feeling of a knee pad. You need to. You put a little more meat on your bones. You'll be looking for them knee pads. Trust me. Right. Well, maybe the maybe it'll the extra weight will go to my knees. I'll be padding. What zoom mm -hmm. for fifty r twenty two groups? So I shoot twenty. I shoot at max magnification for groups if I'm trying to shoot groups, and that's typically anywhere from twenty five to thirty power. Um, I've shot groups down to seven power, five power, but yeah, it's a hundred percent. If you're trying to shoot really small groups going to be harder to do with two to seven for sure um, 35 and, power 30 power right yeah. shooting groups i'm cranked it all the way yeah but now that's in a match i may never shoot over 16 right ever yeah that's kind of how i am too i think most people are kind of like that um now if it's a 50 yard kyl i'm gonna i'll, I'll max it out but yeah I still stay middle of the road. Uh, 20 power maybe for the KYL, but I'm not too worried about it usually. Um, the SH4J, I have that now. I'm getting ready to film the review on it. But for the money, I think I like it better than the EP5, honestly. I don't know if, why, why I would, but I just think I do for some reason. I just feel like I like it, or I like it more than I like the EP5. I have no idea why the EP5 costs more money, but Man, the, the, I have the EP5 and the old SH4 Gen 2. Mm -hmm. And I said this on the last live stream we did together. Quite simply, the EP5 has a, to me, has a really picky eye box. The glass is a little bit clearer, but the eye box is picky. Where right. I can jump on that SH4 Gen 2 and I, it just, I fall into it. You know? Right. That's what I know. I mean, it it's still a what three four hundred dollar scope. Yeah. I mean, uh, what shoot? I did it again. That's a that's a night force attacker. Seven to thirty five. That that they don't compare. Okay, so yeah. I know there's some people out there that they're like, oh yeah, Arkans as good as a night force. I'm gonna get back to this, but I can pass this. <laughs> you, what, you want me to go down that rabbit hole? No, Let's no. This far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I lost it. Uh, the SH4J. So this is why I think I like it. What Chris said, you get a better eye box for whatever reason. I don't know why. And the J is a Japanese glass. So to me, it, the glass looks the same now as EP5. I don't typically like 6 to 24 as much as I like 5 to 25, but I like that's good more. Um, yeah, oh let's God. Back, on, back on track here. Uh, <laughs> Send a knee pads to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed one. Does the shimming really work on aftermarket barrel and stock barrel? Bolt shimming, yes. So most factory guns are going to be on the looser end of that space I found. You can find some sometimes marginal, sometimes not even measurable gains, but I do – Anything if you can close the headspace up without going too far, which is usually 2000, you can get away with on almost any factory gun. Share the bolt up 2000, and yeah, you can see a little bit of change. I think just from being a little less headspace, maybe not allowing that cartridge to grow as much as the bolt uh, face when it's getting fired, and you're going to get a, a little bit uh, better ignition, I think, out of it. But yeah, what's the outdoor land in? 
don't say hi, not shooting for a while. I had a hunting accent, broke both legs, all the content. I, holy crap, you must have fell out the tree. Buddy. Oh, that sucks. That's my buddy. That's, Lance. that's your buddy. <clears throat> well, somebody like squeezed legit. the juice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, old, old Juicy, he fell out of a tree stand. He had to, uh, that's his name, Landon, obviously, but right, broke both legs and they airlifted him to Kansas City, I think. Uh, he, he was really lucky. He had a great paramedic team. Big shout out to those guys, uh, for helping him because he, I mean, he, he, I think he went into shock and everything. Like, I it bet. Was, yeah, you fall like that, break both your legs. Yeah, it's uh. He, he, I sold him a 300 wind mag that he hunts with, and yeah, so it's I think your he fault. broke the stock and everything. I gotta happened. go. This is all your fault. fault. You got him the gun that got him in the tree that dropped him on the ground and broke his legs. I think you should be compensated. It's got a giant muzzle brake on it. I remember well, but uh, I, I need to get over and get with him. We're gonna make sure his gun's all right. I think he cracked the stock on it, and uh, right. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get him fixed up though. So, Juicy, hit me up, man. Here we go. Going. Chris, rapid fire. Pick one rifle and one ammo for the year. Go. Voodoo uh, uh, 360 uh, SK Long Range Match. Oh, mine's easy. Y'all knew where I was going. CZ 457 Healing Match. Too easy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Can't wait for a review. SH4J seems like it is a lot of bang for the buck. Now, the one thing I'm going to be really, dude, I get, so I, and I hate it because I want, I feel like I'm on both sides. Of it. I get so many emails about promoting Chinese stuff. And one, I'm not promoting anything. Um, I'm only putting stuff on the channel that I think interests you guys, stuff that you guys want to see. So hopefully you can make a better decision before you spend your money on something. That's the real goal. But the problem is I get a little bit of hate. And those guys are really nice about it, about promoting Chinese stuff, because we all know where the Chinese dollars are going. And it's a shit show. I get it. But the problem is, is there's certain stuff at certain price points that a lot of people can't afford a Japanese built optic. Like we don't need or just can't afford it. And I, you know, I got enough expensive crap as it is. I don't want to neglect a whole bunch of products just because they're Chinese made, because that's where some people are going to be. I'd rather someone buy a Chinese SH4J and go out and have fun and get in the hobby and get in the sport than to just say, you know, ah, oh, you shouldn't buy that. You should wait and get something else. Well, yeah, like people trying to get in the sport and shoot, say, production class, say, I mean, entry level, like back when we even started, right? Right. I mean, I, it wasn't that long ago that I looked at a, two three hundred dollar scope like that was a big deal to me right and i may have had to buy that bought that used at a gun yep. show or something um luckily you know can we come a little ways and got some nice stuff and what have you but you know it there there's not a lot of there there's no domestic options really outside leopold is usa assembled not necessarily usa made right um and then the Japanese stuff, but that man, the price point on all that, you know, and the, the low what Leopold has what one option for PRS, and that's the Mark V. Yeah, sorry, Tyler's distracting me. He's been he's Look, been poking. Tyler's got a good question. Well, he and this is why <laughs> he was messing with me about the knee pads earlier. Look, Tyler, we're. We're Bergara brethren around here. Like Tyler shoots for, uh, I think still shoots for Bergara. Um, so, and I've seen his guns at uh, the shop and stuff. So, um, and he knows his answer already. The Bergara is a hundred percent. Actually, I would say I hate the Bergara bolt. I wish Bergara instead of releasing a heavy barrel option would have uh, spent a little bit more, more money in the bolt and release like a premier action instead of like, a barrel who cares about the barrel we're gonna the sears guys are gonna replace it anyway and the old barrel shot fine um but yeah of course for ours super competitive um you know are a lot of the guys who are winning shooting other stuff yeah but that's just because they want to um 
Well, our, yeah, we. I think, and I, I'm. I don't know, Josh. What do you think about this? Do you think guys like me and you with these YouTube channels are we are we partially to blame for causing this arms race? No, I think it's the guys who are buying a lot of this stuff buy a lot of it um, based on what the local guys around them are doing and who has mm -hmm. what. And because um, I like Bergara, to be honest, I'll say this: I think that Bergara has better ignition system than Remex. You know, the Remex is way made out of way nicer materials, and hands down, like the Remex in quality and fit and finish beats the Bergara all day, every day. But the Bergara has one of the better ignition, like short of voodoo. I think in terms of ignition, which is huge in Rimfire, I think you've got like the voodoo, and then you've got Bergara, and then CZ and Remex are kind of tied. Um, and maybe even the CZ ahead of the Remex, because the problem with the Remex is you need. 100% caulking effort, uh, like if that makes sense, if you ever cam over a Remex with different triggers in it, it'll start camming, like engaging at different points. And for a yes. Remex, you really need 100% of that to be within it to work its best. So I think the Bergara does it better. The bolt yeah. material sucks, in my opinion, and in the Bergara. To, to Tyler's question, like... <laughs> You know, I was I, I was poking at my my buddy Tom about shooting that hunter match, and I was telling him, man, I'm I'm gonna leave my voodoo at the house, and I'm just gonna take my my CZ 457 DIY project and uh, just shoot it. It's a little lighter, you know. It's dependable, right? Uh, I don't know. I just, but no, I, I'm with you. Uh, I don't I don't think you need these guns to be competitive, but a lot of people are shying away from shooting the sport and that really hurt that, that makes me feel bad because right. they get there and they see these five thousand dollar guns and they're like well i've just got a eight hundred dollar cz i'm not, i don't i'm not i'm gonna get my ass kicked and that's not the case at all no it's way more the shooter and we know that you know if you've been in it for a while yeah. but hell i like now that modicam has prefits you know for the cz cz has like so many options now you know, like now, I don't think you, I think now with as much crap as CZs have going for them, I don't think anymore. It's not like if you show up with a CZ that they're like, oh, a CZ guy. I think it's as much to worry about as the Voodoo or the Custom Brigar or, or whatever else shows up, the Remex is. Because um, I've shot them all, you know, CZ versus my Remex versus my Voodoo out the distance, 305 yards on the same day. And that CZ don't give up crap, nothing. I mean. You, like they don't give up nothing to the, the other gun. Yeah. So it's good. Um, yeah, I, I like this comment you got pulled <laughs> up. Uh, Athlon, yeah. there's a few other companies, man. They're really good at giving back to the community. Yeah. I think uh, Tree Feller, he shoots for him, but I'll always, Dustin Harding is the kind of like the, the big marketing guy for Athlon, but those guys and Darren, like they're super good people. Athlon is, I was shooting Cronus's. Um, when I first got started and I really love the Cronus. And I think still think that right now, like when you're talking 14 to $1,500, Cronus is the best scope in that price point. And then when you go to 16 and $1,700, Trax is the best scope in that price point. And I will rep either one of those guys and or both um, and recommend them to pretty much anybody because they're good people. And Athlon's got some really good, good people in the company. But see, and I, I shoot for Apex, and uh, I, I love their right. scope at their price point. But, hey. you know, I get down there to that, like, $800, right. and I shoot that uh, Midas Tack 5 to 25. And oh, it's, that's a good it's scope so hard money. to beat. Yeah. Man. I, I that's what's on my, that. my little Jabberled CZ. Right. I start with that that's Helos. Up. 4 to 20 helos BTR Gen 2 is what I shot with my production gun until like the MSRP of the MTR went up and took it out of being legal. Um, but that helos was a really good gun. Um, thoughts on betting the stock to increase accuracy? I would say if it's a mediocre stock, then yeah, betting it will increase accuracy. But if it's something like a chassis or manners, like don't even bother, you're not going to clean anything or foundation. 
I think I think a great resource for this is actually the owner of uh, Graybo Stocks, Ryan McMillan. Uh, there's a video where he was talking. You know, most of these modern age stocks are precision machined, like say a right. foundation or these new inletted chassis. Uh, the machining tolerances are so tight with these new machines, man. It's like, is betting going to hurt it? No. It, any variance you can get out is good, but you're not going to be able to perceive the actual uh, improvement. Now, if you're talking like a damn a, uh, Boyd's Pro <laughs> Garment, yeah, bet it. Hurry. Get it done. <laughs> right. Yeah. So a lot of people the same level. Yeah, so I think that's guy. So the EP5 is hot. <clears throat> um I guess or saying out maybe if you're saying out then yeah I would shoot the SH4J. I don't but let us know what you really meant. Hot out I mean yeah I'm not sure. How is the airgun class been doing as far as popular and top guns and ammo? Airgun and NRL twenty two is that line as far as I know. So if you go out west, so if you get close to Utah, the air gun section of NRL 22 is, is popping off. Like there's a lot of that, but there's a lot of air gun shooters out there. You come out here on the East Coast, I mean, really very, very rare. Even where Chris is, when I was in Missouri, I shot an air gun in one of the matches, and Doug Bose was like, he had to make a little beer koozie because he's like, oh, this is our first air gun. You know, and it's not like that. The rules just changed. But for tradition, I think for places outside of where air gunning is really big, like Utah, um, places like that, I, I think it's it's fairly flat line. Uh oh, we got, uh, well, let me answer this one. Uh, coming in a few months, I hope. We got Mr. Kenny, the old, uh, yes, yeah, CZ457 wizard. He's the man. Hold on, Chris. I'm gonna have to call. I lost Chris. I'm gonna have to call him. <clears throat> that way Sorry, I can hear man. him. No, you're good. Yeah, we got I'm Mr. Kenny. <laughs> uh, let's see. Anyone got dedicated 22 hour shoot a lot? Go through 22 MS. I'm working on getting a JP complete upper. I have a JP barrel on the upper right there. And, uh, it's a lot of fun. I haven't shot it a lot, though, because it's kind of on loan to me. Here's a good one, though. Kind of what we were talking about. A lot of misses. You know, people, I don't know. I, I want to say this. Let me just say it the way it, it's in my head. That I'm not going to worry about. is it, Obviously, I don't think it's going to apply to the people watching this. Um, I think people get in the habit of buying things thinking that that is going to fix the problem. And the real problem is just lack of experience by training. So I think it's easier to have a Bergara and be like, man, if I get that boot, or I get that Remix, or I get whatever it is, then that's going to take me to the next level. And it's easier to tell yourself that. And I think that's what gets people jumping up that ladder really quick and buying guns yeah. that you know, they probably didn't need to have. But a lot of people too, it's a thing where like, they want to know that the gun is not the reason why. That's why a lot of guys go custom. A lot of guys, you know, get over to Kenny, to Jonathan and Monacam. They just want to know the gun isn't the issue so that they know when something happens on them. Of course, you know, probably doesn't matter either way. But Yeah, I, I, I'm <clears throat> with you there. I think uh, another thing, I wish I'd have done this when I was getting into it, right? Rather than spending a bajillion dollars on building a custom gun or a whole bunch of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You, you know, I should have took classes, right? I should have went right. and spent spent that money and went and and took a long range class with whoever you trust, right? Whether if it's uh who is it, DTAC or whatever, or right Chris Simmons or or whoever's doing that right. stuff, right? Whoever yeah. you trust, find find a method and and get with that. Spend the money on you, not the gun. Right. I will say this, Chris Simmons. It's hard to take on social media. And I know Chris Simmons personally, and I know his personality. But there, he has been posting, like, his training classes things, and it's funny because it's true. 
he puts a meme up there and there's, you know, the whole meme of a long line of people at one table and nobody at the other table. And the long line of people at the one table was people who want to win nationals, rimfire matches. And then the other table was a sign that says people who want to do the work to win the PRS nationals, you know what I mean? Like, and that's reality is like, kind of like what you're saying, you know, um, yeah. you know, I'm guilty of it. That's why I can say, I know it, it's out there because I've done it. You know, I bought crap to try and level up, you know, it didn't work. But. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I hope nobody takes it as me like preaching something or whatever. I just say that because I, I literally lived it. I just kept buying and kept buying and kept buying. It didn't do me any good. I didn't right. get any better. You know, uh, I'll, 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 I mean, a friend of mine, Bud Weber, told me the best thing I could ever spend money on was uh, learning, right? Uh, go get a class, learn. Right. Yep. So, I mean, shout yeah. out to him. He, uh, I should have listened, but I didn't. <laughs> right. Well, we it doesn't, it's like you're telling your kids stuff. You can tell people stuff all, and it's the same with me. You can tell me all day long that, you know, the path is this. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. You know, we all eventually yep, figure exactly. it out. But two day NRL X match in Minnesota in April is going to be the best match. Of the <laughs> Tyler, I'm about to have to freaking just like put Tyler and time out here in a minute. The big Minnesota boys. Ooh, Let's see. Minnesota. They do have – there's two two-day NRL 22X matches this year. One is in Arizona and one's in Minnesota. They're going to be for qualifying for Worlds for 2025 and then also a 22X match. And you've got to shoot both days, I think. But Kenny says he's working on a threaded AR-50 dedicated upper using a Tacon 3D on the bolt, finding it now accurized. This match is nice. Yeah, that would be pretty freaking cool. I'm getting – I'm starting to get into the AR stuff just because the two-gun matches, I hope, are going to pick up popularity. And it's just fun. I want to train um, with an AR platform because I haven't shot in so long, and it's easier how, to do it in 22. How are you doing with accuracy on the 22 upper? Do you have is, you have a dedicated 22 upper, or are you just running the bolt conversion? No, it's a dedicated. So it's a JP super match barrel and bolt combo. It's not mine. It's been so many. Mine is hopefully coming at some point. Um, but they're pretty good. Like I shot it right. It shoots like MOA, um, like way more than. And they, it's not, they're releasing some like actualized stuff, heavier barrel stuff at some point. This is just our standard stuff, but it runs good. I mean, I only got the 10 round mags, but it has yet to fail like extracting. Feeding, firing, or anything, it runs like the beast. Yeah. I've got it on a what is it? Uh, eight, I can't remember. It's I got it on like a $600 lower, and then I'm running yeah. a 10 mini Calvin Elite. And yeah, so it's going to be the same lower I run with my 223 upper. Well, I, I, got, I got an AR sitting in the Agreed. safe. So, Kenny, you better expect a phone call. I'm calling, homie. My, my daughter's pop said you have to grind for that X speed. Like, yeah, that's true. You really got to. <laughs> I shot off of some props the other day. For, oh, for that video, for the uh, that dude. I haven't been shooting, especially off props. I haven't had time with everything going on. And dude, I suck again. I'm like, man, I'm bad. Like it goes away pretty fast i was just like i got a lot of work to do if i'm going to be competitive yeah. for like that last place again anytime soon well dude like i i started with this this new company like six months ago right thinking i'll take a couple month break you know get get settled in all that stuff and then right yeah see you buddy and then, no, he's uh, not leaving. He's just saying he was oh, thanking us for spreading the word. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got you. But yeah, yeah like I, I, I haven't been shooting matches. Hell, I haven't been shooting videos, which Josh gives me crap about all the time. He he says I'm a retired YouTuber. That makes but, uh, Yeah, we we had a you know we've got some stuff going on, and and uh, I got into this new job, and I, I work in a company that releases a lot of products and. They're a large company, and uh, I, I'm a service engineer for them. And it's just like, man, I've been running crazy, and, and kids and everything else. I I don't 
I don't know where I'm going to find the time. I got to get back to making videos though. It's like, do you practice? Do you make videos? Do you, do you go to the kids basketball game? What do you do? <laughs> oh yeah. It's insane. <laughs> and the fantasy is, is that the side, the crap off camera doesn't take that long, but in reality it's, I actually got to, um, I juggle, like I struggle with that. I'm bad at scheduling anyway, but between the job, the family, the monthly drill crap from National Guard, and then this, um, and I prioritize this very highly, actually, probably more than I should in reality. Um, I try to prioritize YouTube stuff quite a bit. Um, but, man, there's just not enough time. I mean, that's my biggest complaint now. I've heard people say that throughout my adult life but, uh, and Kenny's probably in the same boat you're in the same boat when you get your hands in somebody possibly at the end of the day you kind of want a lot I just want more hours in the day because I can't get everything done or enough stuff done and it's just it's yeah. aggravating um, to fall behind but it's a huge time suck being on YouTube. Yeah. dude it Ratchet is girl. it's insane Sean Ratchet Girl thank you for saying hello everybody see you in Yuma Arizona Oh boy, yeah, that's the other match I think is in Yuma for two days for the world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to see that. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. Brad into it. Yeah. He, he, he's going to get a phone call from me. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, Kenny, hey, hook it what? up, homie. <laughs> he's probably blocking your number right now. All right, um, I know. It. Oh, I meant to do this one. Thanks for taking on the guns when I started Bullseye 38, creating my 22 to quality on the couple of I made a big difference. There was practice, never played. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a lot more about the uh the practice than anything else. I'm looking around. Hold on. <clears throat> so I feel like I have something. Oh, he just ran off again. Yeah, I left. Anybody follows me on on Facebook or whatever, they probably realize I've spent more time in a boat fishing than I have been shooting. My my nine year old picked up bass fishing, which I was never any good at, and he's uh, kicking my tail at it. So if any of y'all have bass fishing tips, send them my way. I'm getting schooled by a nine year old. Trying to see. I thought I had some more swag type stuff around. I was gonna do one more giveaway it's hard to do ammunition because you never know where it's going <laughs> Let me yeah, you got me looking around too <laughs> i've got some stuff but unfortunately i have to make videos with some stuff and i wanted to do one more and not be a dst thing because i gave away one dst looking around I fly my boat is a surf boat, 68 and wake surfing. There you go. It's cheaper. No, no, it isn't. Do you know how much a wake surf boat costs? <laughs> that man spent some money. <laughs> oh, he's got a wake. Oh, no. Yeah, I got you. Nara, <laughs> the 14 hour rimfire. Just too many feeding problems. Agree. Uh, it's like any other 700. Um, if you get, I have mine. And it beats great. I mean, I run the L3 I mags in it, but I don't think it's generically an issue. I think a lot of people have problems because the factory for our mag doesn't have a, a, an adjustment. And then people put it in a stock that doesn't have an adjustment. And then you're just at like the luck of the draw on whether your bottom metal or whatever you have for a magazine fit, then it's going to work. Because 722 stuff, you need to have something adjustable, either the mag side or the gun side. Because, like, half the time it's just not going to work the way it should if you're not able to move that mag up and down to get it feeding just right. Is, is that your kid batting a large mouth while he's riding a noodle? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> That's funny. Here's a fishing tip that we got for you. Leave the nine-year-old on the bank. You take the boat, level the playing field. <laughs> That's He'd true. still figure out a way, man. I'm right. telling you, like, I can go all day catching short fish, 
and and Josh, you don't fish, you don't, you may not know what that means, but short fish is under legal, right? They're not keepers. But uh, you know, I'll go all day. I may I, I may get catch two to one, three to one on him, but by the end of the day, he's gonna put a four or five pounder in the boat and make me look like an idiot. Right. <laughs> this guy, Austin, you you two might as well be related. I work on bass boats for a living, it's just like shooting gun uh, down the rabbit hole. Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah, cool. Scott said, I was laughing at the money you spent on a gun. Joke's on me. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I work with boats for a living. I know how much that stuff costs. <laughs> right. And he's saying he don't see as many finishes with people with the R's. Others, usually bad mag, miss just a mag, chat combo. Yep, I agree. I'm not a big fan of the factory mags. The, the Bergar mags are okay, but in the context of you're buying a complete gun for a thousand dollars, yeah, just go L3. The Bergar mags will, the Bergars will feed fine. Hey, did I see that right the other day on uh, Paul 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 from Voodoo? Yeah, L3 I is going to be doing working yeah, on the mags. Yep. So good for him. I even heard that maybe this may not be real or not real but i think he i think l3 i mags are gonna ship with curtises and mpas maybe yeah probably i wouldn't doubt it i i don't quote me on that guys i don't know for sure but i i thought that's what i heard right what's up dirt atv how's dave drop there you should probably always remove the firing pin if you can um you know I wouldn't dry fire any of them because they're they're not going to peen the barrel. That's not the problem. The problem is is that firing pin is hitting like a hard stop, and that's a very violent stop. You don't want to just sit around and dry fire it, you know, for practice with a firing pin in. Unfortunately, the uh, 457 is one of the bigger pain in the butts to remove. Um, but you know, if you're going to do a long session, it's probably worse just taking that firing pin out. He's saying, is that the new L3 I mag? It looked like it yes. was one of the new ones, the elites. Yes, that yep. is the new one. It, uh, there's the deal back here. Yeah, so. sorting and measuring the rim help. I think if you're shooting high quality ammunition, you don't need to. If you're shooting cheaper ammunition, it's probably going to help me. It's not going to be as yeah. good, but you know. If you're shooting PRS, I wouldn't bother. If you're yeah, like a super super anal bench rest shooter, right. have it. <laughs> yeah, there's a good question. I've replaced mine. Um, the only one I haven't replaced is Voodoo. I replaced. It does help. They are a wear item. You probably should oh. replace them. I broke one in Bagara. Right. I I've replaced that. them just out of if I think about it. I'll replace it, but typically I forget. My Voodoo, I've never had a problem. Uh, it's got all the same parts in it as when Kenny sent it back to me. Right. The, I think the thing uh, with the firing pin spring is not like it stops working. Is slowly over time, it's going to lose its energy and not going to give you maybe as consistent of ignition as it could. It's kind of like a slow wear item where it's – if you – Set it up on a date and just replace it. You'd probably be better off. Uh, I'm not sure if. Uh, and well, actually, there's comp Kenny posts comment. Uh, let me get through this real quick. Uh, got the awards. I don't know. I got nominated, which I appreciate. Um, the voting is still going on. The Gundies is. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Not to say I don't appreciate being nominated because I do. You know, anybody who think enough to nominate me for anything, I certainly appreciate it. Um, the Gundies is a popularity contest. The I'm in I can't, the category I'm in is like gun best gun reviewer, um, but Grand Thumb and those other guys are in there. There's no way it's the same guys win it kind of over and over again. It's the huge YouTubers, but I do appreciate you guys voting. I do appreciate getting nominated. Um, two years ago when I was nominated, I did make the top three or four. When I was in one officer school, so they would normally fly you out there for free, but I couldn't go. So my brother went on my behalf. I didn't win, but. Uh, no, I, I appreciate it. I don't want people to think that I'm not appreciated. But Gundy's is kind of a 
popularity in high school contest put on by by a marketing firm that is like I think support or not supports but represents a lot of big band tubers. And I think that's the reason why it exists. But yeah. Again, it is appreciate cool it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean I I was not expecting to be nominated. I was just like, oh. When's that they Kenny came on Will Savage Park last year, too? I think that was for you, Chris. Oh, that is for me. Yeah. Um, well, I can't grab it, but it's sitting over here beside me. Um, right. You know, it's mounted up in the Oryx chassis. It's got the EP5 on it. Um, I need to, <laughs> like I said, guys, I, I haven't been doing a lot of videos. I need to get on that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I, hey, do you, bum? <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it the gun's shooting well, and it's coming along. Um, I, I plan on doing either a live stream or maybe a podcast format video on my channel coming out here pretty quick. And I'm going to touch some topics Josh and I have been talking about as far as I'm You're probably going to re... <laughs> I'm going to... Sorry. I'm going to revamp and kind of uh, refresh my channel a fair bit. So bear with me. I'm, I'm working through it. So right. Kenny says he changed his at the uh, test center and it changed the results a lot, quite a bit. Hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that. I, I haven't changed. I've changed probably three or four of the guns, something that I would like yeah. to do more, but something else I'll but, forget to do. And if Kenny's li Kenny, if you're listening, I don't, uh, I know you build a lot of guns. You may not remember. I think you put the heavier firing pin spring in my voodoo, but I honestly can't remember. So if you do remember, let me know. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm not sure where you would get a CZ firing pin spring because CZ parts are like crazy hard to get, but I'm sure we could dig around and figure out what's what, what it is. Cause I'm sure they're just air ordering a generic one. And Kenny says setting up a working 457 extractor and spring replacement had the same results as the Valcortson. Yeah, the Valcortson was a bummer. But yeah, more options are always better for the rest of us. That's for dang sure. He says your V22 has a 19 pound spring. Thank you, sir. I have to write uh, let me look around one more time. Ask your last minute questions. We're about to close this out. I'm going to find something else to give away. So Chris, yammer on about Apex objects or something. <laughs> I, I don't know what to yammer on about Apex. They got, uh, they got scopes. They got probably the, I like their scopes, but uh, well, shoot, wrong hand, wherever it is. That set of binos right there. Summit Pros with a reticle in it. I dig it. I like that a lot. Uh, I was thinking about that Savage uh, that the gentleman was asking about, and I've actually been really impressed with how that gun has been handling out at distance. I don't know if I just got a good one or or what, uh, but that gun, and when I say distance, I'm only talking out to like a couple hundred yards, okay? Um, but it's for what it is and how much it costs, man, I've been I've been pretty impressed with it, really. It uh, it's shooting well. It just I'm having a hard time complaining about it. But uh, yeah, number nine, nineteen pound spring. That's what I needed to know. What do you got? What are you giving away now? All right. Well, it wasn't nothing extra extra fancy or nothing. But I'm about to upgrade to the other ones. This is an Ely. Haas and Shield ammo case. So this is one of their 100 round ones. You stick two boxes of ammo in there. And just because I probably won't be using that. And I want to at least do another giveaway. Now i got to figure out some other question that only 22 guys would know. Let's do another. <laughs> All right, that's it. I got pulling, him. pulling him. He's gone. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to change the gun. 
Same question. Well, let me see. I want to make sure this. Okay. All right. Same thing. I'm going to give you a drop in mills. And I'm going to give you the distance. This time, you guys were pretty close. Going down to three feet per second. Within three feet per yeah. second. Yes to muzzle velocity. Cool. Zero to 50. Targets at 150 yards. Um, no wind values. Let's see. The drop in mills is 4.15. 4.15 this is the drop. Yes, within three feet per second of the muzzle velocity of the gun for that dope. 22 long rifle, 150 yards, 4.15 mil drop. We'll see whoever gets it first. Three feet per second. Ooh, some already some rolling in. That's what I like to see. Do, 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 do. And I'm gonna give you this. I don't think anybody's gotten gotten it yet. It is Ely Matt. So one of the higher BCs for 22 ammo. I think I know. You think you know. Okay, know? Let's see. Oh, never mind. Somebody already got it. Let's see here. I'll make sure he's the first one. Dang, that was quick. Brandon Knight. He says 1092. It was. I cover my stupid face. 1091. 1091. We got a wiener. So same for you. I'm going to put it down in here. need you to email me, Brandon. Probably going to throw something else in there if I, something I, I find. So shoot me an email, Brandon. Who else came really close? Chris Pickens was close. He was 1085. Let's see. Scott kind of came in a day late, dollar short. And then Tyler was just throwing numbers out there. Ten <laughs> wow. Yeah, you guys were pretty on that. Uh, I didn't give the out. I'm a couple hundred feet above sea level. Yeah. Kenny's picking up on it. Our air is way heavier out here. Yeah, we, we got some thick... Thick oxygen out here to shoot through. We do. Oh, well, that's yeah. funny. Sitting right next to Joel. <laughs> what do you live in the same like apartment complex as Joel? That would actually work out. I could send one box to both of you, but I won't. I'll send it. Save on, save on some shipping. <laughs> yeah. <that's> a... <laughs> now I'm trying to get out of it cheap. <laughs> oh, shit. Scott said that's the story of his life. I said, all right. What about Elmer Theos? Make that, oh, you guys ain't getting my Theos. Not this kind of giveaway. I said I may give away a Theos when I hit like a hundred thousand subs, but that'll be ten years from now, and the Theos won't exist. I think I'm gaining on ten thousand. <laughs> this bum hasn't left since we got back from the match at Gazden today. That's funny. Oh, they're all local to you. Hey, my people. <laughs> Damn. I heard, I heard Tom <laughs> sucked it up today. Well, that's kind of his life story. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. He said I can just send it to Joel. Okay. Yeah, I'll send them both, and I'll, uh, I'm will i going to throw something else in that box. Uh, now I know it's going to Missouri. Maybe some uh, throw a couple boxes of Ely in there or something like that. I thought those names sounded familiar. Now I know who they are, but, like, right. for some reason they hadn't clicked. But Yeah, I, that's I for sure. people are. Yep, the Theos is nice. All right, gents, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, congrats to those guys. Don't forget to email me. <laughs> Tyler Orr says he's unsubscribing now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, I appreciate you guys showing up, uh, hanging out with us. Uh, thanks for everybody that super chats. If you're still around, definitely appreciate that. And uh, try and do some giveaways. I'm going to reach out to some companies that support the channel and see if we can get uh, – some swag type stuff, some, you know, some good stuff that uh, give away on the live streams to you guys. 
Uh, I'll come up with some more trivia. That's not muzzle velocity based at some point, but yeah, it's going to be a monthly thing. Um, eventually, maybe I might be bringing some channel sponsors on. Uh, they won't be new companies. It won't be like, oh, this is Olight sponsoring the channel. No, it's not going to be that. Uh, it'll be companies that I've worked with before, but we're trying to grow the channel, do some things. So if and when that happens, they will be the ones sponsoring the live streams and a once a month video with no Google ads. And uh, we'll be talking about their stuff, talking about all the normal stuff we do and giving away some of their stuff. So be good for everybody. So if, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be fun. And if not, we just like this, we'll just give away crap that I own and maybe some of the crap that Chris owns. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks, guys. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, what's the, uh, yeah, he says, keep at it, Chris. We both need to make videos. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of holding down the floor for you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate it. Hope you all have a good night. Thanks again, Chris, and we'll see you all later.